Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly Editor Martin Creamer joins me today to unpack the latest in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashni. Now, Minerals Council South Africa has stressed the need for energy and logistics reforms for sustainable mining. Yes, you know, energy reforms, absolutely critical. Logistical, absolutely critical. But crime and corruption as well, which they did emphasize. Because what is happening is that, um, particularly with logistics, crime is disrupting the logistics, which means we're not able to export at the volume that we were coal and iron ore and other aspects, which has a massive impact, negative impact on our economy. The rand gets weaker, inflation gets worse. It's huge, it has to be stopped. And what is good about the Minerals Council pleading for some sort of solution is this, is that they're very much involved and the private sector is very much involved. And there can be a, a very strong outcome with private sector, public sector. But what I would like to see is the whole of South Africa get behind this, South Africa incorporated, because it's for the good of all South Africans. And how come are people getting away with actually sabotaging the line? You know, it goes beyond now just stealing copper, we can see, you know, they're cutting the new line, which they can do nothing with. It's not valuable to them. How dare they do this? And so I think that the, I'm hoping that it's just a matter of time where those criminals get really put away for a time that doesn't enable them to keep coming back as we've had in the past, but that we also see on the energy front a lot of activity that the private sector can come in and, and the, this elephant in the room of not having grid is sorted out by public-private partnership as well. You know, why stop that? And then the whole idea of, um, you know, electrons, molecules, we need to go into the green hydrogen space as well. And I think that that was incorporated in the plea by um, Minerals Council South Africa. Now tell us about the agreement between the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy and the IDC for a mining exploration fund. Yes, you know, we've been pleading for some sort of incentive for exploration for a long time now. You know, at one stage, the, the finance ministry went into a budget. They promised that they'd have the flow through scheme based on what happens in Canada the next year. When the next year came, I think by the mid-year, they put in a gazette notice and they said, this is much better. It was shocking. You know, not one mining company went for that incentive. It was a whole lot of Cape boutiques, you know, which really angers me because a lot of that treasury is too orientated towards the Western Cape and they ignored what was needed. Now, those people who did that should be exposed because that has caused a huge shrinkage in our mining sector. Now, even now, you're pleading with the treasury to maybe just even start with a low incentive tax incentive based on the flow through scheme, you don't hear a word. So what is, has to happen is that the department itself and the Industrial Development Co have Corporation have had together, come together with a 400 million rand fund, you know, which might sound little, but it can take us far if, if it's done with the right enthusiasm. You know, I just picked up the other day that a person 10 years ago who started trying to get a prospecting license went into South Africa's geoscience uh, database, it cost next to nothing. And, you know, they're going ahead now, 10 years later, okay, it's taken them a long time. And they have also been assisted by the Industrial uh, Development Corporation. So you can stretch this, but it shouldn't be the end game. You know, they should then try and bring Treasury in, even if it starts with a very small incentive on your tax, linked to the stock exchange. They've got to have it linked to the stock exchange. You will see that the critical minerals and metals that we have to get, they'll start focusing on those and I'm sure it's going to help. Lastly, it was revealed at the mining in Darwa last, last week that black ownership in the South African mining sector is now 39%. Yeah. So, you know, <coughs> in 1994, we had a massive change where democracy came to South Africa and the ownership of the metals in the ground moved from the private sector to the public sector. And then they set up uh, 
a system where you were supposed to be able to go and access licenses, etc., which hasn't worked that well. But then in uh, 2004, we came out with the mining charter because this was meant to bring all South Africans you know, into mining, which is capital intensive, not easy to enter. And at that stage, even though there had been 10 years of, of freedom here and democracy, the ownership of the mining industry in South Africa by black people was only 2%. So now, and then with that mining charter, the, the next 20 years has seen it jump 20 times that to nearly 40%. It's an interesting number. I mean, maybe people would have liked 50% or whatever, but it's an interesting number. It shows you, you know, that, that the trend is there in a capital intensive. You know, South Africa's black community have gone in and become part of what is a big asset business with export potential. And that will only increase from what I can see. Uh, you know, you see even on the export front, all the fronts, that that ownership is going to Increase, but even now, 39% is an interesting figure. In really only 20 years, it's not the 30 years of democracy, and it largely came after that uh, mining charter. And it's coming now with a lot of focus on you know being inclusive in mining. A lot of the people who have got into mining have got there because of the fact that you know the the whole colour bar is just gone, and you can see the big difference is the transformation and the diversity in mining is now strong and people are encouraging that diversity and you're bound to have entrepreneurs coming out of there in bigger numbers. So I'm sure that percentage will rise, but even now it's an interesting figure. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. A great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, Please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.